Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you all, it seems like I can't ever get right. Uh, we, we're behind the power curve again, but I, I thank God that we're here. Amen. Uh, that being said, I want to apologize to everybody for uh, kind of having our uh, buffet late. Uh, we, we tried to go somewhere and they were offering a special, but that special was only, you couldn't order multiple specials. And then uh, I asked my daughter to go pick it up and somebody at the restaurant decided to cuss my daughter out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you 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 want well we we gonna stop by there on the way. In the name of New Jerusalem. Uh, this is time where you're not supposed to stay. <laughs> but listen, to, today we're talking about recognizing temptations. <laughs> it's it's how you handle temptation. Uh, I'm, I'm, Satan has a way of knowing what buttons to push. For real. And he's good at it. He, he is he is absolutely good at it. He, he, Satan has been doing the same tricks since the beginning of man time. You know, I won't say the beginning of time because he, he wasn't there in the beginning, only uh, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit was there in the beginning. But from the, the conception of man, Satan has been there and he's been using the same tricks. The Bible says that there is nothing but the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to try to get to you in one of those three places. Yes. So, uh, you all, we, we, we finished on last week talking about the um, the minor prophets. We, we went through those, the last 12 books. I would like to say I'm grateful because I do feel like uh, even I am a little bit more versed in those last 12 books than I was before. Uh, I know a little bit more about the minor prophets. I, I, even in, in seminary, when we studied them, you know, we kind of did a, a collection of books. And uh, we had the history of the Old Testament, and then we had the history of the New Testament, and we kind of touched a little bit. But we didn't go necessarily in depth in all of those different books. So I, I do feel better, and I hope that you feel better. I, I hope that you know a little bit more than what you did a couple of months ago or a few months ago when we started this. Nice. Now, as we go through and as we have our Bible study, I, I want to say this to you. I, I, I talked to some people today and I asked them, you know, uh, if, if you wanted to learn more about the Bible, what would you want to learn? They said, I want to learn everything because I don't think I know anything. <laughs> well, I want you to know if you've been here in Bible study and we've been talking and you've been asking questions, you never know how much you do know until it comes up. Amen. The idea that I can say, how many books are in the Bible? How many books in the Bible? 66. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? What's the overall theme? Do, uh, uh, do we know or can we prove that God or Jesus is love? Huh? Yes, we have. We've asked that before. Uh, no, you didn't ask that yesterday. Huh? What? I've asked in the past, can we correlate Jesus' love to the Bible itself, the overall theme being love? And we, the answer that came out was, yes, because God is love. And I said, is there any proof in the scripture that puts Jesus and God as love and, and the Bible? Do we have proof? Where's the, where where do we find that proof? In John. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, 
So if God is love, Jesus is love, they both are uh, all three being one, even though they are separate, and the Bible teaches us that God is love, then yes, we see how the, over, the, the, the whole entire Bible is love. You know more than you think you do. I, I gave the example, you all remember in either one of the uh, Karate Kid movies, we had, uh, I forgot the guy's name, was it? In, in, in oh, the first one? The first one, Ralph Macchiano, Macchiano, and then the second one was with uh, Jaden, is that how you say it? Jaden Smith. But in, in any one of those movies, he was showing him how to do regular things, hang your coat up, wax the car, uh, uh, paint the fence, but didn't realize that he was teaching him uh, martial arts at the time. And he got aggravated. He said, I'm tired of you making me do all this stuff. I told you I wanted to learn Kung Fu. I wanted to learn Karate. And he starts doing these things and he shows him. You've been learning karate even though you don't know it. Many of you all, if you come to church and you pay attention and you take notes and, and, and you participate, you are learning even though you might be having fun and, and we're laughing, but you're still learning. There's a lot of things that you're getting and God, uh, the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance when those things come up so that you could see you know more than you think you do. I guarantee you if you went to some of your... Uh, even church friends and ask them how many books in the Bible they're going to study. If you are able to break down all that information that we just went over, the average person I'm going to say in the church don't know that. So um, I want you to, to, to be proud of what you are getting and what you are learning and I like the idea that there's a lot of feedback to me. What we are teaching on tonight is because somebody said I want to understand Temptation. I want to recognize it. We have somebody else that says, can you teach about who God is? What does God bring to the table? What happens uh, with salvation and after salvation? Does things get easier? Why does it seem like things get harder after salvation? And uh, these are things that you all are saying that you want to learn. Uh, if you still have those papers in front of you and there are other things that you want to learn, please continue to fill those things out. And get them to us so that we can go over it. I want to learn or I want to teach you and I want us to learn together uh, what it is that you want to know. Because I guarantee you, if you want to know it, somebody else do too. Amen. 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 All right. So, uh, with that being said, my phone, uh, matter of fact, let me turn it down. But uh, I need you all, if you will, to keep me, keep me up on... Uh, who's not necessarily who's watching, but if anybody is, is commenting, uh, share this. This this is going to be good. This is going to be good because it's in the word. That's 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 number one. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we all deal with. We all struggle with. We are all tempted at different times by different things. Kids, when 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 mom tells the kids go to bed. They're tempted to wait to see when mom is no longer around and then they, you know, they get their little flashlights or whatever. They start talking across the room instead of going to sleep. Uh, we have different levels of temptation, but it's temptation nonetheless. Mm -hmm. How we deal with it, uh, I think all of us to some degree deal with it the same way. We sneak and we do stuff and then we hope that we don't get found out. And if we do, then we have to understand that there are consequences to every sin, every type of sin. Uh, you know, you, you, you don't get the death penalty necessarily for lying, but there is still a sin. Well, well, well. According, to, uh, uh, according to God, there is a death penalty for lying because the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. But... For the most part, God does, uh, to some degree, temper your punishment to where your punishment ought to fit the crime. You all understand what I'm saying? Uh, but don't misunderstand who God is and take his, his grace and his mercy and his kindness for weakness. 
Does that make sense? All right. Uh, you all, please, all those who, who, who are willing to, to share this, let's get this information out. Let folks know that, yes, we are, uh, we are live right now. And, uh, yep. Miss Taylor Sierra says, hey, family, good evening. Well, good evening, Miss Taylor. Uh, we miss you. Looking forward to seeing you all not only back on Sunday but back on Tuesday night. I know uh, you and Sister Rachel normally come together, and I'm not sure what your uh, your situation is as far as transportation. But almost every Tuesday or every Sunday, whenever Miss Taylor is not here, she is watching, she is commenting, and uh, I'm grateful that we have our new saints who who are keeping connected with us. That does certainly mean a lot. So, recognizing temptation. I want to go over, and I want you all to talk back to me. I want to go over some scriptures that kind that that identifies temptation. What does it mean to have temptation? What does it mean to be tempted? Uh, Those of you all that have your Bibles, let's let's go. Uh, let's start with Matthew chapter twenty-six, verse forty-one. Matthew twenty-six, verse forty-one. Let me know when you got it. Uh, King James, I believe, is. Uh, yeah, so if you're using your devices, pull it up on the King James Version. That's, that's what I have written here. It says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. One of the other, uh, uh, one of the other paperwork that was filled out where they, you know, where we were asking, let us know what you want to learn about. Somebody said, I want to learn more about faith. I want to learn more about increasing faith. Faith will help you to counter sin. The greater faith you have, the easier it is to, to push sin away, to push sin back. Does, does that make sense? So the more faith you have, the more you have belief and trust in God, the greater power that you have. Uh, I forgot, who, who was it that says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? Was that... So then that, if that was John, then that, if, if it was in First John, then more than likely that was John speaking unless he was quoting someone else. But if it was John or whoever it was, you, you cannot have greater in me without great faith. When you all start saying greater is he that's in me, who's in you? Who is the, who is the greater of he that's in you? The greater of he that's in you is who? Christ. Christ. How do you get more of Christ in you? Huh? Study in the word. Study in the word. So, we already equivalated that the word of God is living. Living, yes. But, uh, remember I said you can take out the, the, the phrase, the word of God, and insert Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. So if, if in the Bible, if you see Jesus, you can remove Jesus and put in the word of God and it will work. And vice versa. So if you want to have greater as he that's in you, you cannot do that without studying. 
So if you want to have greater faith, faith comes by hearing, but hearing comes by the Word of God. Or, hello. See, y'all smarter than y'all thought y'all was. Does that make sense now? How do I resist temptation? I resist temptation by having more Christ in me that can help push temptation away. Get away. <laughs> you don't just holler, get away from me, Satan. Leave me alone and think that that's going to work. It don't work like that. You have to have some force behind you. You got to have some credibility. You got to have some power. And remember that we said, and we talked about this, and Minister AJ brought this up, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. If there is no fellowship of suffering, if you don't suffer, brothers and sisters, you won't have no power. Now, I, I, I wish that the, the individuals who asked about uh you know, it seemed like when I got saved, all hell broke loose. And I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong. Well, I want you to know that you're not doing, necessarily, you're not doing anything wrong. Don't think because all hell broke loose that that meant you did something wrong. Because you got saved, you did something right. And Satan is mad about it. And he is going to come and he is going to try to oppose you on every turn, every chance that he gets. He's going to try to oppose you. He, he, he's going to make uh, uh, your teachers mad at, at you. And, and, and they're going to say, they're going to lie on you because they're the teacher. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, your teachers was always right. And you the one who said something wrong. I'm like, Mama, but I promise you I didn't do it. And then we hear stuff like, your teacher ain't got no reason to lie on you. Well, they you. But, you know, that wasn't an answer I could give at the time. Come to find out, teacher was lying. <laughs> but, but how many times have, have your boss came against you when you didn't do nothing wrong? Or talked out the side of their mouth to you because, you know, they got more rank. Or, or they're the manager, the supervisor, the, the team lead. And you just a regular worker, so they can just talk to you with all kind of attitude and, and, and whatever else and try try your Christianity. You know, you go through the drive through to order some chicken and somebody just come on the on the, the intercom and just start cussing you out right. over some chicken. Right. You know, stuff like that. So the spirit your, the saved part of you can never do wrong. But the saved part of you and the human fleshly sinful part of you is always fighting. All, they never get along. They're, whether or not they consider it a personality disorder, I want you to know that everybody in here that's saved has a personality disorder because all of us in here who say is at least bipolar. Some of you might be tripolar. Some of you quadpolars. Some of y'all got so many personalities they just take a number. But it's when those personalities don't know how to get along. Because all of us got different personalities. So true, so true. I have the personality of a father. That's one personality. I have the personality of a husband. My, my wife will say, uh, you were so much nicer to the kids than you was to me. How can you be in an argument with me, fussing and cussing me out, and then the baby's coming on? You say, hey, sweetie, how you doing? You just flip. Well, no, I, I like him right now. Right now. I don't like right you. Right so, you all understand what I'm saying? And, and, and how I teach, how I talk to, to my wife, and then my mama called. And I said, hey, mama, how you doing? Oh, I'm your wife. You ought to treat me better. Shut up. I can't stand you. I don't want to talk to you. See, 
You have the son personality, you got the husband personality, you, you got the daddy personality, and then you, you, you go to work and you got that person. You got all of these different personalities that are working all at the same time. But it's when you don't know how to control those personalities when we have things like schizophrenia or uh, bipolar disorder. Because, like, again, all of us have multiple personalities. It's just when you don't know how to control it. But the spirit, the spirit side of you is willing and always want to do right, but the flesh side of you is also willing and always want to do wrong. Amen. Always. Always. Spiritual warfare, even though we're not talking about spiritual warfare, I want you to understand that we're talking about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare happens every day, all day. There is not a day or a time that Satan is not trying to kill you. He's coming against you. He's looking for an opportunity to beat you at your game. Amen. Why does Satan want to beat you at your game? Or why does Satan want to beat you, period? He doesn't like you. He don't like you. Why don't he like you? He's angry with God. He, he, you all remember how often we bring up the scripture. Satan is talking to God and he said, what is man that you are so mindful of him? What, who is he? Like, you know, that's a wife who caught her husband in, in an affair and goes, what's he got on me? Well, for once, she don't talk. <laughs> you all not understand that, that Satan is saying, I hate God because he loves you over me. Teach. Satan is saying, God forgives you and allows you, even after you do wrong, to, re to repent and get right. He didn't give me that chance. Oh, so to, as far as Satan is concerned, that's not fair. And since I can't beat God, I can beat what He loves. You all, this is game. This 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 is game turf war. I can't get to the kingpin, so I go to the school and I find his kid, and I shoot his kid because I can't get to the kingpin, but I can get to his kids. I can get to his wife. I can get to his family. Satan wants to get as close to what God loves and he knows God loves us so much that he literally sent his son to die. So there was there was the, 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 the old Superman before uh, who's the guy now? What's his name? Henry Cavill. Before Henry Cavill, uh, going back some years, there was Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves was in, you know, now Christopher Reeves was the son of George Reeves, who was one of the original Superman when the, the sitcom was in black and white. <coughs> but you have General Zod, and they're trying to fight Superman, and, and they really can't get to him. And there's a scene where... General Zod goes, look at this. He cares for the people. We found his Achilles sin. I know how to get him. Yeah, I forgot the word. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bring it up. But y'all know what I'm saying, right? We're going for the jugular. I, I, I know where to cut him off at. So they just start blowing up random things around the town, and, and he couldn't get to all of them. Satan says, I can't get to God, but I can get to every last one of you. That's what, huh? Well, basically, people were Superman's kryptonite against his enemies. You are the kryptonite. God says, whatever you do unto my least one, you do also unto me. 
and it's better that you leave my kids alone. See, when, when my daughter told me this woman just cussed me out because I went to buy some chicken because daddy, that's what you told me to do. Oh, that you just took me out of preacher mode. No longer in pastor mode. I, I wasn't, for that split second, I left Christian mode. Oh, we're going to handle that. We're going to make some phone calls. We're going to get up there. What time they close, I'm making sure we are the Bible study early enough to where we can get inside the door. You all understand what I'm saying? God says, whatever you do unto my least one, whatever you do to my kids, you've done that also unto me. Satan knows how much. So that's why you are tempted Every single day. Because if I can get you to sin, I know that sinning hurts God because you've just had an affair against Him. I know how much that's going to hurt Him. So we need to recognize then those temptations. We need to recognize what happens when we see Satan doing what he does. Now, we, this has been entitled Recognizing Temptation. But for the most part, all of us have truly recognized when Satan is coming. You're not necessarily blindsided no. by Satan. <clears throat> Puff the magic dragon don't just show up. Ain't nobody ever had an affair on accident. <laughs> you knew, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, he, she, whoever was looking at you, was winking at you. You know, when so-and-so called you at 12 o'clock at night and said, could you come over to my place? I just want to talk. You ain't stupid. <laughs> you knew what that meant. Hey, I'm, 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 my eyes is getting heavy. You don't have to go home. Why don't you just stay here? We'll just lay here and cut. That's a trick. A real one. You call me three months later, Pastor. I found out I'm pregnant. I don't know how it happened. Well, how old are you first? If you're old enough to, to have had health class, you should know how it happened. Now the rest of it, I'm telling you, you've been a part of that conversation. So, uh, you all understand what I'm saying? So many times when I say, how did we get here when we're doing marital counseling? And I say, how did we get here? I don't even know. Really? You, you, you don't know how we got into the place where we started having conversations about uh, infidelity and I was just at work having lunch and then I woke up in the hotel. Really? What am I saying? Let us not let's not insult God's intelligence and act like we don't know how we got into sin. Okay, let, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. You all, I get the feeling that we're going to be on this for a minute. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 13. Are we there? All right. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, this ain't nothing new. Temptation is common. And all the temptations are common. 
But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So don't don't ever say you all. I, please forgive, and 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 I'm trying. I, I want to keep this. I can't do it G, but I can at least keep it PG. I'm gonna make sure you you you. you Explain the baby girl PG. Um, I've talked to men who said, Reb, she came to the door bucket naked. I had no other choice. Oh no, you had a choice. You could have ran, like just screamed no and run. There is, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God says no matter what you go into, there is always a way out. Always. You cannot tell me if somebody came in here and said, preacher, I'm going to kill your wife or I'm going to kill Ben. I don't know why you Ben. Because Ben was standing up. I just had to use it. <laughs> Y'all, that's a very difficult choice, but it's still a choice. He said, I'm, I'm going to kill everybody in here mm -hmm. or I'm going to kill one of your daughters. Mm -hmm. And then you might say, well, one, one daughter versus everybody else in here? <laughs> All y'all, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? And, and you would hear people say, but I had no choice. No, it was a very difficult choice. But it was still a choice. So God wants us to know that there is always a way out. We just. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he'll direct you. If somebody come in and they, you know, these are your choices, preacher. Sir, before you start shooting people, let me pray. Lord, which one you want to go? Who who do you want right now? All the ones who sinned a lot today, and then you start seeing people shrivel up. Oh, so you know that you've been sinning all day. There is always a root of escape. God always gives us a way out. Now, go to James chapter 1, verse 12. But I wanted you all to know that everyone, all of us have temptations. Every last one of us. This baby girl is 8 years old. She has temptations. You all, there's a reason why we have... Our kids are much smarter today than they were 50 years ago. That, that baby knows more at 8 than my dad did at 8. What she has in her hand, that supercomputer that she has in her hand, has, has, has given her access to so many things that we at that age didn't have access to. Now, with much knowledge, the more we know, the more we are responsible for knowing. And because of that, we know a lot more than what we should at different age groups. But Satan also makes sure that what we are learning ain't just God stuff. As a matter of fact, to tell the truth, most often what we learn and get off of these computers and on the internet and all of that, the majority of it is not God stuff. So you'd be surprised how much she would be able to tell you about what you don't know. But 
here we are talking about all of this stuff and, and, and temptation that's common and God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted more than you are able to and he's going to give you a way out. With that, James chapter 1 verse 12 says, But blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried and, I mean, y'all understand, not just tried, but when he is tried and he has successfully went through that temptation, that's, that's the part that's to be understood. He shall receive the crown of life. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Did, do you all know uh, that there are more than one crown in heaven? Did you know that? They, they, there are different scriptures and we're going to talk about that at some point in time. Well, well, we can bring these up, but different different things that you do on earth gives you different rewards in heaven. Mm -hmm. There are multiple crowns that that you are able. When you play a video game, you go to different levels, you get different rewards. Mm -hmm. The same thing on earth. When you get to different levels and, and, and you, you, you do different things and God allows you to see through and to get through, God opens up all of those different things and there are different rewards for each different thing that you go through. So here, after for enduring temptation, you receive the crown of life. Let's see. Just trying to see if I can get uh, one whole list. There are six heavenly crowns mentioned in the New Testament that will be awarded to believers. The crown of rejoicing, the crown of the soul winner, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life. The crown of incorruption or imperishable crown, the crown of glory. All of these different uh, crowns, excuse me, crowns based on different things that you overcome. Now, the first time I ever heard this was at my father-in-law's homegoing service. And the man who was preaching, I'm thinking, blasphemous. Why he's sitting there trying to do all this extra stuff? And then he started bringing scriptures. I'm like, wait a minute. As many times as I've heard it, I never paid attention that, you know, crown of, I'm just thinking, I always heard of the crown of life, the crown of life, the crown of life. But every time they mentioned different ones, I didn't hear the different ones. All I heard was crown of life, not realizing there are multiple crowns. A lot of times we don't pay attention when God is speaking and and. When the man of God, when the woman of God is speaking, uh, speaking or teaching or preaching, we hear things. You all, I heard somebody a couple of weeks ago say, uh, you know, Pastor, when you preach, you, you just talk to us. But when Bishop preach, he, he hollers and he screams and I don't understand what he's saying because he's too loud. I said, you ever been to a rap concert? <laughs> Yeah. How soft was it? You ever been to a rock concert, an R&B concert? Let me hear you make some noise! Everybody scream! Ah! No, they, they weren't they wouldn't soft. They weren't soft at all. But we go to church and we say the preacher is too loud and this says too much. I can't hear. I don't understand what you're that ain't nothing but a lie and, and a deceitful lie from hell to try to keep you from paying attention. Now don't get me wrong. Bishop and I have many or, or, or our styles of preaching is so different. But he's preaching the same word of God for the last 50 years that, I, that I've been preaching now for, I don't know, 17 we, anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. 
Blessed is the man that endureth. If, if God knows that you're going to be tempted. But I want you to understand that that is part of our life. The Bible teaches us, I believe it's Hebrews that says that we don't have such a high priest that does not understand who we are. In other words, God didn't give us Christ as our advocate. Christ is your attorney who stands before the judge and pleads your case. But in order for him to plead your case, he had to be able to understand who you are. So that when he speaks to God, God don't know what it's like to be tempted. But Christ does. So Christ, when, when, when God says, you know what? You just sin, time for you to die. Period. Sin equals death. You sin, time now. Christ says, but Pop, hold on one second. I went down there just for this reason. You all, hey, 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 are, 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 are. y'all paying attention? Yes, sir. Right. I need you all to understand truly that everything that you're dealing with, Christ dealt with. Where is it? Is it? Uh, go to Matthew chapter 6. So, one of the, 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 the questions that came up was like, it seemed like as soon as I got saved, all hell broke loose. You all remember me saying that? Yes. Matthew chapter 6. No, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 3. Go to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 13. Matthew 3, starting at verse 13. Still reading from the King James. Then came Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, his cousin, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you, and you come unto me? And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, the word of the Lord has to be revealed. The word of God has to come true, and if you don't do this, then the word of God won't be true. So I need you to do it. So John said basically okay. And Jesus when he was baptized. Right after his baptism. Went up straightway out of the water. And the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. The spirit of God is who? The spirit of God is who? The dove. The spirit. Who is the Spirit of God? The Holy Spirit. The ho I, I want to make sure. Remember, just like I said, the Word of God equals the, the Word of God equals Jesus. The Spirit of God or the power of God equals the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God descending like a dove. You all remember uh, on our logo we have the dove, which is the representation of the Spirit of God, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That's Matthew 3, right? Mm -hmm. Go to the next, Matthew 4. Then was Jesus led up. Then when? Right after the... The Holy Spirit landed on him and God is talking and saying, hey, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In, there's another verse or in one of the other uh, uh, versions. I can't remember if that was John or Mark. I can't remember. But it says immediately, 
He was led into the wilderness to be tempted. As soon as, court, let's, let's say as soon as he got saved, mm -hmm. as soon as he got baptized and, 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 and started his ministry and made this proclamation, immediately he was drove or driven into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. Mm -hmm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry, so after he got real weak, then Satan came. Now, the Bible says that when the tempter came to him, the tempter is Satan. Satan is the tempter. Y'all put a pen at uh, Matthew 4, verse 3. Uh, go to Mark chapter 7. Verse 20. Mark 7 verse 20. The Bible says, Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man. God don't tempt you, he tests you. There is a difference between tempting and testing. Now, does God test us? Absolutely. No, Mark. Mark chapter... Oh, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I think that's... Yes, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I, well, because the way my notes are, when I when I put all of these together, the scripture. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, wait a minute. Am I just messing up everybody? James chapter one. Let's see, verse thirteen. James chapter one, verse thirteen. Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. So, if we go back then to Mark, well, I think it was four that we were in, where the Bible says the tempter came, you need to understand that whenever you are being tempted, that it is not God tempting you. Because many people misunderstand temptation. Jesus would not pray when he's teaching us to, to pray in Matthew chapter 6 and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. He wouldn't say don't lead us into temptation if he knew that God was going to be tempting us. But many of us put ourselves in places of temptation. When my wife and my daughter start making their sweet cakes and treats and cookies and, 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 and all the stuff, I should just stay upstairs. <laughs> when I know I, my sugar's at 300 and my daughter is sitting there and she's making that homemade caramel sauce and she's just stirring it and then she do like this here and just make sure that it's nice and creamy. I shouldn't stick my hand in there or a spoon and get a big spoonful and eat it and run away. Or when my daughter turns her back and I take a scoop full of her cake mix yeah. and eat it. Uh -huh. Or when they have cookies and I ask, are any of these extras? Well, Dad, you know we make extras in case anything go wrong. Well, which one of these are the extras? Well, none of these are extras now. But then they... They make all of the treats and then they leave the extras on the table. And the next morning, some of them are not there. <laughs> Elevator's not working. <laughs> that's not Satan. I mean, that's not God tempting. That's not God testing. But I put myself in the place to be... If you know you have a problem with alcohol, stay away from... from you, you you can find some pork rinds besides the liquor store. Right. If you know you have a problem with lust, 
Stay away from East St. Louis next to the Hustler Club. Find another route. You all understand what I'm saying? There are some things that we put ourselves in and then we say, well, you know, God knows my heart. You all, we, 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 we got a lot. Uh, we, we got a lot. Proverbs. Here, here is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 28. Can one walk upon hot coals and his feet not get burned? Mm -hmm. This is where Granny said, baby, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 28. Brothers and sisters, we 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 put we put ourselves in a lot of different things. The Bible tells us to flee youthful lust. First of all, I don't know what they mean when they say youthful lust, because at fifty it's the same as it was at fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> you all, I, 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 I know a lot of what I call now senior men, men in, in their 70s and 80s, and one of my brothers in, 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 in Branson who, who watches us frequently, I never would have known that he was, how old is, is, is Brother Almer? 75? So right. Somewhere around there. Y'all, that, that man still runs. First of all, I'm almost 50 and I don't run. I, I'll get on a bike, you know, and I'll, man, I, man, I, I can sweat on the bike, but run it. But he, he's married, been married for many years. His wife looks just as good as he do. And he said, man, we still enjoy our marriage. If, 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 and and, and y'all understand what I'm saying? That man ain't got no problem, don't need no pills. Stop acting like y'all green. So, when they say flee youthful lust, hey, I don't know how young youthful have to be, but some of us are still young at heart. Just because I'm 50 don't mean that I forgot what lusting is like. And I know how to stay away from it. That's again why I say for, for people who are not in, 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 and I mean no disrespect, in my family. You all, my aunt and my grandmother or, or, or whatever can call me if they're members of the church. Because there is, there is no way of getting that twisted. But other women in the church, you need to call my wife if you want to talk to me. Amen. So that we make sure you, you understand what I'm saying. We we, we we don't cross that line. Ray is a member, but she's also my cousin. I don't have no problem with Ray calling me. Y'all y'all get what I'm saying. So, but the wrong person at the wrong time will try to call, and Satan is always trying to say, "Hey." Here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity. Okay, no, 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 absolutely not. So, so we put safeguards in place. For the longest time when I was dealing with lust in my mind and my heart, <coughs> honey, I'm going to go to the grocery store. Girl, one of y'all want to go to the grocery store? <laughs> well, Dad, not really. Somebody need to go to the grocery store with me. Because I'm walking in the grocery store and the lady comes and say, excuse me, sir, what kind of cologne is that you? I don't know. I just, uh, I got models. 18 bottles and I just, it, well, it smell real good. That's the game. Thank you. Thank you. Then she go down the next aisle. I still smell it, lady. Are you a canine? Why are you still sniffing? Then she, you know. Oh. Jesus, let me get these, these ding-dongs, get out of here. Uh, 
uh, uh, hey, baby, grab the stuff. Come on. Now, see, as long as my daughter there, I know that even if I want a trip, they're going to tell. So I keep, I, I, I keep boundaries. You all understand what I'm saying? So I make sure that I always keep somebody who can hold me accountable. That's why I tell you all, you need to stay amongst brothers and sisters in the house of prayer so that you can remain accountable. Yes, yes. God said he'll give you a good escape. Always a way out. Yes. All, always a way out. Yes. But flee youthful lust. God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We were already in James 1, 13 when, 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 when he said, let no man say that when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. But uh, James chapter 1, verse 3. So we were in 1 and 13. If you go up, 1 and 3 says, know this, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now what happens though? You've been tried, but you didn't succeed. You failed. If you failed, you need to be excommunicated from the church. You can't serve no longer. Uh, you you. If you was in the choir, you got to sit down. If you was an usher, you got to sit down. If you was a pastor, you got to be removed. Oh no, no, no! If you're a pastor, you got to be removed because we 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 we, we can restore the usher, we can restore the choir member, but the pastor, no, absolutely not. You know how many pastors I know or don't necessarily know, but I don't seen them because when a pastor falls, they put that on front page. When when uh uh, uh when it was. What's, uh, what's the man? Jim Baker and Jimmy Swagger and Eddie Long and uh, 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 who, Bryant. Oh, when, 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 when there are what they call then moral failures, it's all over the news. When the guy who was from, uh, uh, Lord, what was it? Uh, from Joe Osteen's church, who, who he set up and planted. Uh, man, it, they couldn't live it down. Nobody cared when, when Ugly Biggie had 18 women. Or Ugly Flavor Flay had a house full of women. The house of flavor. When we watch shows like The Bachelor where they go through 18 different women to find out which one they want and we support it. The Bachelorette. And she got to be a hooker because it's the bachelorette, but he's a man when it's the bachelor. But Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Y'all get there. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, you who didn't fall right then, right then, you who didn't fall right then, because ain't nobody around here perfect, you who are spiritual, and, and, and right, right now. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Restore them in the spirit of meekness. Because you know you can restore somebody and still basically put them down. So even how you restore them, restore them in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourself, lest 
you also be tempted. Don't be so holy to think that you can't fall. Because Satan would love to get you on your high horse. Because when, when you put your head up in the air, I'm waiting for it to rain to see you drown. Here we have all of these different scriptures that's, that's talking to us about temptation. You know, there, there, there are so many different scriptures. I'm trying to see which one, and as we get closer to the, the end for today. Uh, hmm. Second Timothy, I'm, I'm, so, so that we just don't have a, a, a long void, I'm, I'm trying to. Because all of these scriptures are good. Second mm -hmm. Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. This is the, the scripture that tells us. Flee youthful lust. But follow righteousness. Faith. Charity. Peace. With them that call on the Lord. Out of a pure heart. You all, even though you might put yourself in a bad situation, even though you might put yourself uh, in a place where, remember I said, none of us fall uh, in sin. It's, it's, it's not an accident when we sin, but that don't mean that I'm necessarily, I'm not necessarily blaming you. If you also understand what I'm saying for the sin. I know how difficult it is. That fight. That we have. Between our flesh and our spirit. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You know it's not easy being a Christian. Yeah. It's not easy being right. Yes. It's hard. It, it, it is. It's, it's heavenly hard. Or. On, on, the, on the other spectrum, it's hella hard. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if I can use that, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. It, it's, it's hard when you are constantly, every day, fighting and fighting and fighting. That, when, when Paul says, I have fought the good fight, yeah. you all, he meant that. Because every, you all, every day, I, I want, every day, all day, the man, the man side of me wants to sin. Listen, if, if can, can I can I be very transparent and very real with you, and and uh, I want to call out sin for what it is. There are people who tell me those who who, who have engaged or do engage in homosexual activities, they say, Pastor, I was born this way. <laughs> I was born having these tendencies. Well, brothers and sisters, most men, heterosexual or homosexual men, have a desire to have multiple partners. That's why we have David, who, you got David, you got Abraham, you got Solomon. Name for the most part, uh, uh, the men that we consider Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The three people who we talk so much about as the fathers of the Christian faith, if you will, or the, 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 the Jewish faith, which transcends into Christianity, all had multiple wives. You can tell me all day long that my flesh as a man desires another man, and I'm going to tell you, so what? That don't mean that you have to deal, that don't mean that's the way you have to go. My flesh tells me, get as many women as you can. God told me, let every man have his own wife. 
So I battle the desire to, to not lust after other women because God gave me a wife. Now, do my flesh and the sin want to every day, all day long, try to get away with it? Absolutely. But I have to sacrifice myself every day. I die daily to my flesh. So I don't care that that's how you feel uh, that you have from birth these tendencies. That don't mean anything. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So make sure that you know that just because your flesh says this, you don't have to give in to it. So no, you don't have a root of escape. You cannot, ex your escape clause is not, I was born this way. So was I. You have the ability to overcome with Christ. Christ gives you every opportunity to overcome all of your situations. All Now, again, I'm not saying that it's easy. But here the Bible tells us, hey, the Bible doesn't say uh, necessarily if you fall, but when you fall. You have an advocate. God knew that we were going to fail. That's why Christ had to come. It wasn't an option. Because he knew that we could not not sin. Jesus Christ was the only person ever born that lived any length of time that did not sin. Mm -hmm. That's why he said there's none that do as good as sin is not. No, not. Not. There are so many people, you all, I, I know preachers who have preached from the pulpit. My wife and I heard them. We were, we were attached to those ministries where they said, when I got saved and I allowed the Holy Spirit to take over, I stopped sinning because I was covered by the blood and the Holy Spirit led me out of temptation. Well, that might, it might be true that the Holy Spirit led you out of temptation, but you can't say just because you saved and full of the Holy Ghost that you don't sin any longer. Because if the Word of, the Bible says, if an angel comes and says anything besides what the Word of God says, let that angel be a lie, let them be a curse. If the Bible says there is none that do it, not did, not done, not past tense, present, there is none that doeth good and sinneth not. So then, it doesn't matter if you say sanctified, full of Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, you, you ain't walking in the Holy Ghost every day, all day long. True. Amen. <coughs> Absolutely not. And, and, and many people, and there are some religions, and, and that's why I don't like religion. I like truth. The Word of God is true. When Jesus went up on the mount and Moses and Elijah come and they minister unto him and after they minister to him his countenance is so high he's glowing they couldn't look up on him because the anointing was so high but the anointing began to wear off and when do you all remember when when the woman came and touched Jesus uh, who had the issue of blood and the Bible says virtue came out of him and he said who touched me? Yeah, yeah. The anointing and the spirit when when you all when we get done preaching on Sunday we're drained. No I didn't hoop and I didn't holler and I didn't need a handkerchief and I didn't sweat but trust me 1130 I'm tired. Virtue has gone out. The the, some of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus, after he would minister, the Bible says he would go and the angels would minister until the angels would replenish him. Ain't nobody in here. Saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost every day, all day long. Full of the Holy Ghost? Full, full? I mean full. It don't happen like that. So there are times when so, you all never say never. Never say never. Because Satan 
can find you at your lowest point. Or oh, I'll never do crack. Or oh, I'll never smoke that. Or oh, I'll never shoot up. Or oh, I'll never drink. Or oh, I'll never, what? never. Say never. Because Satan is looking for the opportunity to make you out of a lie. Especially in front of the people who you hollered you'd never do it with. Or to the one who you put down. Because I remember when all those tele-evangelists, when Jim Baker, or what, I can't remember who was the first one. Was it Baker or Swagger who, who got caught? And, and one of them said, he ought to be this, that, and the other. And it wasn't three months later. And that same one. And then he had to come before the, the, the television and ask for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, I don't talk about no other minister or preacher who falls or fails because the Bible says there is no sin that's greater than the other. If he had an adultery and I lied yesterday, God looks at that the same. So if you want to put him out of the pulpit, y'all need to start looking for another preacher. But the Bible says to you who are spiritual, in other words, to you who, who has the right spirit right now, Go to that one and restore that one in the spirit of meekness. Lest you also find some temptation that you fail in. So when somebody comes and they say, Pastor, I failed in this area. Understand, I'm never here to condemn you. And the word of God tells us, I believe it's Romans chapter 8 that says, For those who are in Christ, there is no condemnation. But you ought to be convicted and you ought to be in a place where you have someone who can hold you accountable. Don't be afraid of being accountable. The Bible says that before you should be healed, uh, in James when it says, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the, before you start calling for the elders of the church, the Bible says, go and confess your sins one to another. First of all, if you keep telling everybody you sin, you ought to stop sinning as much so you ain't got so much to tell. After a while, somebody going to be like, man, they coming again? We need to be accountable, that's, but that's why we need to be here. Do you? But do you know how liberating it is, though, when you stand up and say, this is where I've fallen, this is where I'm vulnerable, and I need somebody to help me. I need some." There is a weight that is lifted. Have you ever done, ever done something so wrong and you just wanted to tell somebody because it was it, it was pressing on you? It was a it was a burden. It was a, a, a true weight that was on you. And that's why they say confession is good for the soul. Because once I confess it, when I give it to God, God says it's no longer on you anymore. That's what that's what my son came for. That's what Jesus Christ came for. So that I, he said, hey, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden, my burden is light. Oh, yeah, it's still a burden. But it ain't nothing like the one you carry. I got you. Brothers and sisters, those who are watching, I'm sorry. I know we are way, hey, I can talk to them. Um. We, we had our, uh, what do you call it? Sorry. Our offering period uh, just a few minutes ago. So if this word of God is helping you, if this is being beneficial, if you are learning something, one, I hope that, that you let us know. If you're watching, let us know. Let us know that you're watching. Just say hello or something. Uh, spread that word. But also, if this, if this is being a blessing to you, we ask that you would bless this ministry with your finances. You can do it. Uh, with the cash app for those who are virtual, uh, the cash app is dollar sign uh, New Jerusalem 1977, or you can access the Zale app using the phone number 314-368-7378. You all, uh, I thank you for the opportunity. One, again, please, uh, we should have on, uh, on the table... And, and if we don't just use any of those forms that's on there, if there is something that you want to learn, if there is something that uh, that's that's 
bothering you or bugging you or you've always wanted to know. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how small it is. First of all, if God cannot answer your question, then he ain't God. Mm -hmm. Now, that don't mean I can answer it. Let me just make that clear. But that's why we can study together. The Bible says, come and let us reason together. Iron sharpens iron. How good it is for the brothers to dwell together in unity. Brothers and sisters, that's what we are here for. So uh, even if I can't uh, by myself, I don't think that there is anything that we could bring up that God would not help us to understand. Amen. 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 So please continue to bring those questions in. Um, we, we, we have just a little bit more, but we don't have enough time. Uh, how do you know if it is the devil that is tempting you? Then there are different signs to look for. Uh, and, and we have a, a bunch of things that we can go through that will kind of help you to know if it is Satan, uh, if it's Satan tempting you or, or if it's God testing you because sometimes they can look alike and you need to be able to distinguish uh, testing versus tempting. But I, I, I hope that you have been blessed by this lesson on tonight. Uh, talk to somebody else. Find someone who, who looks like they might be going through some things. And let them know that it's okay that they're going through it. And that just because they're going through some things don't mean that they did nothing wrong to go through it. Maybe this is just God allowing you to go through so that uh, your faith can be increased so that he can increase your faith or increase your patience or increase your stamina. Yeah. So, uh, God gets all the glory. We're, we're grateful. I'm thankful that all of you all decided to come out tonight. If this is blessing you, please keep this on your calendar. Amen. We want you to continue to, to come and you all, it, it would be easy to, uh, and, and sometimes it's necessary to take a hiatus. You know, as we get towards the end of the year, a lot of churches do away with the Bible study and, and, and get ready to start fresh and all of that. But this word is necessary, and we can't learn it all at once, but um, I just, right now, I feel like it's necessary that we try to keep and build the momentum. Now, you all help me. For those, we'll, one week we'll have 25 people for Bible study, and then we don't have enough food. The next week, every, each week we're spending between $70 to $100 to make sure that, you know, 15 to 25 people can be fed. But it's hard when one week I get everybody, and then the next week I get half of you because food goes to waste, and we don't like that. Uh, we want to be diligent on uh, on the budget because the budget is there for a reason. If we get 100 people for Bible study, I'm all for it, but I want to keep those 100 consistent so that we make sure we're, we're, we're purchasing enough food and, and we're not under the power curve. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, this Sunday, this Sunday starts the pastor's seventh anniversary. You all, please, please come out. I don't want to wear my, my feelings on my sleeve, but it would hurt. It would hurt if you all didn't show up. I, I understand. And, and it's, it's not just about your 250. If you don't have it, that's cool. Come out and still love on us. Amen. Say that you appreciate the work and the time that we put in to try to make this ministry the best ministry that it can be. Amen. 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 So uh, we'll see you Sunday morning, but I'm also looking forward to seeing you all back at 3.30. Yeah. God bless.